This is Dale Jr., and you're listening to Dirty Mo' Radio. She's at a fun age where she'll help me with laundry. You yeah. know, she's all about yeah. taking all the clothes out of the basket. And But if I'm folding, I kind of throw all the socks out. And I'm like, oh, Emmy, you can do socks. Help mommy with, you know, she's like my little helper. And she will, like the other day, she handed me two that matched. And I'm and like, like, how'd you figure that out? Like, my daughter's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Kelly Earnhardt Miller's Fast Lane Family, presented by Wella Professionals. Salon care products that you can experience with your senses. Get high performance you can see, touch, and sense. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Fast Lane Family. I've got a great show for you today. I've got mommy, wife, and NBC reporter Chris Devota here with me. I'm sure you wear a lot more hats than that, too. Plus, stick around for our tip of the week and find out that perfect beach hair from our friends at Wella Professionals. But right now, good morning, Krista. How are you? Good morning. And I'm interested in the beach hair. Yeah, right? Me too. I am (laughs) terrible at doing my hair. It's funny because I would just wear my hair in like a bun or have a baseball hat on all the time if I could get away with it. I was just thinking that your hair looked nice and curled this morning. Did you have something to do this morning? I did. I actually did the photo shoot with Greg Biffle Foundation for the the NASCAR Pets calendar. Great. That's usually when my hair looks the best is when I'm coming off a photo shoot from something for junior motorsports. I know. Otherwise, it would be the classic, yeah, in the bun. So uh, we have a hair story because we were both in the salon uh, around the Nationwide race. And you didn't come to the banquet with the hairdo that you got in the salon. (laughs) I did not. That's right. It was for the championship, which congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And yeah, it was, she did it up and I was like, (laughs) I don't look like myself. Yeah. I look like I'm trying to be fancy. That's, and then literally, yeah, I took it down. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, sometimes when I do my hair and you like put it up or twirl it up and everything, you leave it up for a bit and you take it down. It actually looks right. a lot better, you know, than. Well, I so did it's that. kind of a way to help get your hair. I did that pretty. even for my wedding. Like, you know, again, you're how you're, you feel like how you're supposed to yeah. look, I guess, yeah. for your wedding. Yeah. And so I had her do my hair up and I literally, this is morning of my wedding. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, mm, let's just wear it down. <laughs> so. It was, and, it, and awesome. I was glad I did. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. Well, I got lots of fun stuff to talk about, lots of stuff going on in your world, but I wanted to start out and just learn how you got involved in broadcasting and how you got involved in NASCAR. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of twofold um, for the broadcasting side. You know, I was, I was pretty good in school. Like I was really lucky that, that school sort of came easy to me. So I, I was, I was good in other subjects, but I just sort of gravitated towards the language arts and speak public speaking and writing. Um, so I kind of knew I wanted to do something in that. And you know how you just, you know, I would, I would be the person who did the morning announcements at school and I would be the PA announcer for the baseball team. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. It sort of was laid out for me. So I majored in broadcast journalism and just knew I wanted to do something with sports. Again, for me, I thought, you know, I don't really want to do city council meetings and, you know, fires. You know, I want to do something where people are enjoying themselves and it's fun. And I, I was an athlete in high school and that just, again, seemed like what, I wanted to do. And I've been so lucky. If you had told me though, you know, way back then that not only would I be able to do it, but make a career of it and be doing it for this long, because it is such a fickle business, you know, it changes all the time. So I'm very lucky in that regard. So I was a weekend sports anchor at a few different markets and NASCAR was not really on my, my radar screen. I mean, I covered it a little bit, but as a weekend sports anchor, it was whatever was popular in that market. So I was in Lexington, Kentucky. So it was college basketball. Horse racing. You know, those are the Derby. <laughs> yep. Those were my, those were my beats. But when um, a gentleman named Gary Johnson, who ironically works in NASCAR now, big NASCAR fan, he left. And when he left to move to Charlotte to cover NASCAR, the NASCAR beat became mine. And again, in Kentucky, it meant I went to Kentucky Speedway. I went to Daytona. I did a lot with, um, you know, the Waltrip family, the Green brothers, but I just dabble in it. You know, it wasn't, again, if there was a NASCAR story in the newsroom, it was mine, but it, it was just not the focal point. And Gary called me up and said, you need to send a tape to the show called Totally NASCAR. It's in Charlotte. It's a national show. And they're looking for a female reporter. And my exact words were NASCAR 24-7. Like, I like NASCAR. I like doing it, but I like doing everything else, too. But I was ready for a change. I was ready for a move. So when I interviewed, I just basically said, this is the amount that I know. I'm willing to learn. Take me or leave me. Kind of thing. <laughs> and they did. And, you know, and that was 2002. So I started in 2002 and I still work off and on with Gary Johnson to this day. So it's great. And then you, it, and it's just a family. You know, I always tell people when people tell me, oh, I don't follow NASCAR. I always say, you know what? It's still, a, it's the same storylines. It's athletes overcoming obstacles, the thrill of competition, the, the team camaraderie. It's just that your backdrop instead of being a football field is pieces and parts in a garage stall. Right. So that was, yeah. So that's what I had to learn. I, I knew, I think, how to tell a story. It was just learning the, the backdrop. 
So, which I still learn right. every day. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's always that's fickle and ever changing too. Yeah, <laughs> the backdrop of NASCAR. So, in two thousand two, were you one of the first female reporters coming onto the you scene? You know, I mean, there was, was the. I, I think there was there were people. You know, there's there was the Claire B. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Claire B. Lang was out there, and you know, I know Liz Allison did a lot, and there were there were people before. But as far as the network televisions, um, Jeannie Zalasco was with was with NASCAR and Fox, and she was probably the only one at the time doing the the television. And if I am forgetting someone, I apologize. But it wasn't like it is now, where now right. I think every network has at least one, if not a handful of, of females. And, and think, in sports in general, that's absolutely. The case. You know, you look on the networks and there's yeah. there's, an, there's co-anchors and that type of thing. That and I think it's it's because of our times. You know, now it's, you know, it, it's not a, it's a male-dominated world in terms of athletes for our sport, you know, for NASCAR. But you have as many women who are fans as you do men. And I think women appreciate, it doesn't mean you have to be a woman to give a female perspective, but I think you need, I think women are just intuitively better listeners or better multitaskers. You know, there, there's things going on that we can do. I, I see a story differently than, than someone else would. doesn't mean I'm better at it. It's just a different yeah, perspective. Yeah, exactly. Very, very insightful there. So you spent, uh, you're, you're coming on the scene um, with NBC Sports mm-hmm. and coming on, the, they're coming back into the scene right. of NASCAR. That's exciting. They've got so many great plans. What's the transition like for you coming into NBC because you have been with Fox so long? It is different. And it's strange this part of the year, the first half of the year is when I'm normally at the track. And I miss my Fox. I mean, that was what was hard to leave is there wasn't anything that was wrong at Fox. It was just NBC offered me the position and the role that I kind of always wanted, you know, hosting the pre-race show, getting to tell the stories. So everyone was supportive at Fox and I still, you know, that, that's, I love those guys. That's why I would say I miss them so much. But at the same time, I'm so excited about what I'm going to do. And our group at NBC is so excited about, like you said, just yeah. being, it, it's like, just like with these horses, we're like these horses in the gate that just can't wait to like kind of bust out and get our, our half of the year. Um, so it's, I think it's just really exciting. I'm excited to have that opportunity to, to get to tell stories. Have you guys been working, uh, in this half of the year? What, what's your preparation yeah. been like and what have you been experiencing? You so know, far? and that's, what's kind of interesting. Cause we still do, we do a show called NASCAR America. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the daily show. So I'm on that. So we kind of have a rotation. Um, you know, Rick Allen will go do a week. Um, you know, Steve Letarts on there, Jeff Burton. I'll do a week with Kyle Petty, Dale Jarrett. And we just kind of rotate. So I'm in the studios. NBC studios are in Connecticut. I'll go up there for a week and then I'm, you know, home for a little bit, which is strange that I'm home. <laughs> you know, a race is going on and I'm home. And I'm like, this is so weird. But it's it's nice. It's nice to have family time. And I know, obviously, you know, come July, we're at the racetrack every yeah, weekend. So, be- yeah. So we're still keeping up with the races every week. We have, you know, conference calls and planning meetings and, you know, okay, what can we do with this? You know, okay, we just had this race in Martinsville. What can we do when we go there to, you know, add to those storylines. Well, so that's my next question. What what will the coverage look like from a similarity standpoint that, that our fans are used to and then some differences? Yeah, I think that the exciting thing is also kind of the scary thing. Our group is, because it's a new group, I mean, all of us have worked in the sport, you know, and Rick Allen and I have worked together. Kyle Petty and I have worked together. But it's still a new group as far as the entire entity together. You know, you don't know. You don't necessarily know how it's going to gel, but I think everyone's so... What's great right now with the NBC folks, and what I mean is like the bosses who not are not necessarily NASCAR people, is they're just... There's no phrase of, oh, that's not the way we did it, or that's not the way... We, we've already done that, because we haven't. So every idea is sort of at least it's listened to, it's put on paper, it's put up on the dry erase board. So I think that's what's exciting, is there you feel like we kind of get to get to have a voice and you how get it to goes. really make the map yeah you know yeah and i think yeah. sometimes that's the scary part is there are people who haven't haven't covered nascar again from boss standpoints and from different you know support systems yeah so it's it's teaching you still have to teach and sometimes that's what's really cool is someone will say you know they may go out here in a shop and ask a question about something that and i'm like oh we see it every week i didn't realize that was something that someone didn't know and that's what's kind of fun is hopefully at the end of the day it's still the challenge that we all have Bring in new viewers, build the sport without alienating the hardcore fan. Yeah. That's always a challenge because it really is hard to do both. You know, a hardcore fan doesn't want to hear about the fact that you put Coke or Pepsi on the pit stalls, to, you know, <laughs> but again, a new fan sees that and it's just those little things yeah. that we all take for granted because we see them all the time. Yeah. That would be hard for me because that would, that is the the way I go through it is, I know this, everybody right. else should too, right. you know, right. And remember and to, to tell that story and, and to tell those little details. So what is it like working with Jeff and Steve and Kyle and those guys? Have y'all, the chemistry that you develop, yeah. is that coming together? It is and... so much fun because you have, I mean, well, what I love about Steve and Jeff is they're so fresh. I mean, literally Steve is straight from the pit box, you know, last year, Jeff was in the car even last year, filling in for some drivers. So they are so current on what's going on. 
But even more than that is they're so vocal. You know, I'll ask Jeff Burton a question and he kind of starts like, you know, the broadcast starts and, you know, he's kind of, and all of a sudden he is into it and he is fired up and he's answering. And it's like, whoa, you know, cause he just has so much passion and yeah. so many opinions on things. And obviously, as you know, with Steve, it is just, you know, if anything, you sometimes you just have to bring him back in cause he is, he, and I think Steve has an ability to talk and tell a story in a way that makes it relatable to a fan. I think he really is very good at just sort of simplifying things or I don't know, just the words he uses are punchy. Something about it is, is very, I think, relatable. You said something about opinions and that kind of thing. I've often wondered, how do you balance having a real heavy opinion on something that could be potentially negative when you want the positiveness on the sport and, mm-hmm. and what you're broadcasting? You know, how, how do you decipher that in your mind? Well, the first thing I always do is try to, if I'm challenged with something or if I'm looking, like, okay, how do I want to say this or how do I you know, talk about it, is what would a fan not just what would a fan want to hear, but what would a fan ask? You know, if I'm watching at home as a fan, what do I need to, and sometimes you're just going to broad stroke it because you don't have time to necessarily get into. That's why you have the Kyle Petty's or the Steve Letarts to really analyze it. My, my job is to set things up, set them up to be able to, to have and talk more about it the most, but it's, you know, at the end of the day too, it's hard because we're friends with these people in the garage where we begin, we know their families, their wives, their kids, and you, yeah. you care about, you know that the, it's not, if something went wrong, it's not because of a lack of hard work or effort. It's something went wrong. You know, that was a bad race. You yeah. know, that was a bad race for that team. Okay, it was. They would probably say the same thing. And I also do think if you're in the garage and you've done your legwork and you have respect with the people in the garage, they would rather hear those, I guess, negative or not so positive comments, hopefully from me than from someone who hadn't at least walk the garage yeah. at least you have there. the background i hope yeah you i that. hope that's how right. i feel yeah this is off the subject of broadcasting but yesterday uh carson and i were spending a little time in the afternoon together and she tried on this dress and and it v down a little bit in the front and i'm sitting there and Wait, like I, a little further than mom would like uh, yeah. yeah and i'm like you know i, I didn't want to hurt her feelings mm-hmm. and i wanted to be like you know well and so i said well would you wear that in front of your dad <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought to myself, well, if, if she can answer yes or no to that, then that will make our answer, right? right? So kind of along the same lines of just asking yourself, you know, is this something you'd want to tell your mom or your grandmother? Yeah. You know, would you be proud of it or, or whatnot when you're reporting on Absolutely. something like that? I guess that would be really hard having and knowing all the personalities and then having to, to report something negative or be negative or have a negative opinion or something like that. And I be. think even like with our group, the Kyle Petty and Dale Jarrett and Steve and Jeff, you know, being from, they, they see the TV side now, or especially like Steve and Jeff being pretty new to it is, oh, I didn't realize this much went into it. Or mm-hmm. I see now why you guys, st-, you know, mm-hmm. and I think it's kind of nice. I think if every driver or PR person or team owner spent some time in the TV compound or in a truck and say, oh, no wonder they didn't get our story on. They've got this, this, and this right. going on. And I'm not saying we always do it right by any means, but just that you're trying. You, yeah. You're not out there to throw anyone under the bus or to not tell a story. It's just at the end of the day, like, there's so many times that I'll go home from a race after being in the pits and be like, I can't believe I didn't get that on, or I wish I would have talked more about driver X. That is one nice thing as far as um, like social media is you have that. I, a lot of times I'll be a in a chance to read. Yeah, I can just kind of say, <laughs> oh, I didn't get to talk about Casey Kane today, but here's what Kevin Hamlin was saying on the, you know, just something yeah. to feel like you're putting them out there. And social media is a double-edged sword. Like you could give me a million positives and a million negatives about it. But that is one positive is it gives us another forum. Yeah. So let's uh, switch up to some personal stuff here. You and your husband, PK, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't, I, I didn't even have any idea who you're married to, to be honest with you. <laughs> and he's a videographer in NASCAR. Yep. That's how, Guess we, that's met. how you met. We, that's how right? we met. Yeah. Okay. And you have a daughter, um, Emmy uh, Emerson. I love you spelled that just like I spelled Carson with the I know. And you know, that's a story in and of itself because <laughs> I loved the name Emerson. You know, we knew we were having a girl. And so, you know, you kind of start making the list of names. And I loved Emerson, but with the traditional spelling, mm-hmm. you know, S-O-N. And PK hated it. My husband, he's like, ah, it's a boy's name. No. So he's like, it's off. Then one day out of nowhere, he said, hey, what if we spelled it with a Y, you know, S-Y-N? And I said, so wait, you're saying, I go, I still like it, O-N, but are you telling me that it is back on the list if I give you the spelling? And I'm like, done. <laughs> so that was our compromise. Deal. Literally, I, I picked the name, he picked the spelling. Great. Emmy is a year and a half mm-hmm. old yes. or so. And you still worked while you were pregnant. What was that like? It was, you know, it's funny because looking back, I look at some of the pictures because I did want to kind of <laughs> But not document. only did you work, I mean, I mean. Pit road, it, it, yeah. Okay, so we all work up until, you know, we about deliver the baby. Right. But you're, you're literally on pit road, traveling as on much as you are, on a plane, walking 
on your feet, carrying this belly. <laughs> yeah, it was, again, and the, it's almost harder in the early stages because you're so self, I think as all women who've been pregnant, yeah. are, you're, you're self-conscious, you know, about what do I look like or how do, and now I'm on TV, like now it's like this whole other element of trying to look as presentable as possible. But then you just get to a point where you're like, this is awesome that I'm pregnant. Like this is something yeah. to be celebrated in every woman, like you've earned the stripes Absolutely. of like, you yeah. know, the back pain and the, yeah. but so it, it wasn't then it wasn't, it, it was just, how do I still do the job as, as well as I can, as, as good as I can. It, but I felt good. You know, I really feel like walking up and down pit road and being in the garage helped me because I was on my feet and it just, I think made me healthier. So I was able to, you know, I was literally, I mean, looking back on the picture of me, um, what, like 37 weeks pregnant in Pocono <laughs> on air, it was probably oh not, not pretty. And then I was driving too, by the way, I was, I was not, I was on a plane, I think. You're driving to the races. I was driving to the last couple that I, that I could manage. So, so. what did you work up to? 37. 37 Yeah, Pocono. Weeks, yeah. Um, I worked Pocono in early August and she was born August 22nd. Oh, wow. So Excellent. She, she, she's right on the cusp of being a Virgo, isn't she? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I'm the 28th, that, so I think it's either the 22nd or 3rd. Yeah, well, is right. I think depending on which calendar, what you, you look use. At. Yeah, so I'm yeah. not quite sure what I yeah. should. I don't yeah. know. See which person. She'll be traits. awesome. She'll be awesome. I can go ahead and speak for her. But it is funny. I would, <laughs> there was one story where I think we were in Richmond. and my So my husband and I sometimes would work together. Most of the time we're not. We're on opposite shows or we're doing opposite things. And But there was one time in Richmond I had just finished a practice. And he was getting ready to do the next one. So, I mean, I'm pretty pregnant. And I'm, like, in the garage. My back, my lower back is just killing me. So I'm going to stand. Like, I know people listening can't see this. Yes. But I'm right now, like, <laughs> arched. I'm like, you know how you just want to get that, like, pressure? You want to get your back out. So yep. I'm doing yep. this. And I'm, like, bending <laughs> like this. And my husband, sorry, these people are here watching. And my husband walks by. And he literally is like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, my back hurts so bad. I just have to. He goes, all those fans that are lined up on that fence are just watching you like bend over you look like you're doing like the um what do they call it? one of them yoga poses yeah where you're literally I'm in, the cat or whatever so, so paint a picture so right now i'm like hunching over my yeah. shoulders and like sticking my butt out and trying to get comfortable <laughs> and he said all those people are watching you and i said and see all those people who are women they know exactly what, what you're doing what i'm doing they so don't even I don't, have to yeah. ask you <laughs> that's funny so you had wrote uh before you got pregnant that you never wanted kids what changed well for you I, there? Just, I was such a career person you know I, career was always sort of my focus and i just never grew up being like maternal or being sort of you know i, I was the person that never like i never cried at beaches you know the movie <laughs> like i just wasn't like a mushy person even to this day i'm not a hugger like i am not someone who like initiates hugs yeah i'm the they always joke i'm like the awkward hugger so your I, love language is definitely not touch no or, it's yeah, just yeah just, that's me so it was just not something that wasn't on my radar and then and then you look back now and i'm like how could i not have done this like this is just the most amazing thing ever well, it's so hard it's, to um convey that to people isn't it because you just people just say the same i don't want kids and i'm like the best job i've ever had is being a mom absolutely. and you can't love anything any mm -hmm. more than you can love your child and it's really hard to put that into words and i don't you know devalue or, or try to change if someone says oh, i yeah. don't want to be a parent that's but i just it, i'm so glad that it you know i didn't completely close off that world yeah. you know that it's because it's just and I think too you you get nervous or you too as a career you you hope that you can still do your job and still have an identity outside of that because that's what you want like for me that's what I want my daughter to see you know I hate like leaving her and doing this job and being on the road is so hard it's the hardest goodbye in the world is is having to tell her goodbye but all of us we kind of have this community of moms who work and do what we do you you feel like you know, if at the end of the day, though, if she can see me being fulfilled and happy with something, hopefully it teaches her mm -hmm. that she, the sky's the limit for her, that, yep. you know, she can do anything she wants to do. So how do you and your husband manage that uh, balance? It's sometimes? it's funny. We have, well, and because, you know, we have a unique situation because he travels too. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the ability to one stay back one or parent one stay. This, yeah. Right. And what's harder, and I know there are other people in the, in the NASCAR world who do it. What makes our situation even more unique is we're not always, it's not, um, you know, we're such creatures of habit in our sport, you know garage opens at 7 a.m. and end of May you're in Dover or whatever yeah, it right, is you know yeah. we know what we know where ours isn't always the same you know it's not that she travels every week he and I don't even necessarily go to the same places every week you know if he's doing an Xfinity series standalone and I'm doing you know yeah so it's really hard because you don't always know like okay she goes nope she stays it's sometimes she goes sometimes she doesn't and we base it on really just what's best for her um, I honestly I can't go too long of a stretch without her <laughs> because I just miss her so much and it makes, you know, it just, I just want to spend as much time with her as I can and still do my job. So we take the calendar, we kind of take the year and just put all the races, you know, on the, on a spreadsheet and say, okay, do we have, we start with, do we have childcare in that vicinity? You know, my parents live in the Midwest. 
So last year they drove down to Kansas and watched her in the hotel room in Kansas. Um, his mom lives in the Myrtle Beach area, so she takes Darlington. You know, and that's yeah. that's nice because then she gets to see her grandparents who live you know Several all over times the country. A year. Yep, yep. Um, and then we just kind of say, is there any? You know, my my father in law comes to a couple races. We bring him along, and he. He watches her, and so it, we make it work, and we just, yeah, my sister's going to come to Indy. You know, we just kind of map it out <laughs> with the schedule, and then at the end of the day, if she needs to stay home, sometimes that's almost harder because now I'm finding, um, you know, my in-laws, I do have a set of in-laws that are, because my, my um, PK's parents are divorced, so I have a set of in-laws that are in Pittsburgh um, where we live, but they work full-time, so, you know, you've got, okay, so I've got the Thursday, Friday babysitter, and okay, I've got the in-laws, and, you know, in Texas, though, when we had last year, we had the rain out. I didn't have a Monday. I didn't have a Monday plan. Yeah. You know, I thought I'm going to be home Monday and now all of a sudden I'm not. And it was, so I, you know, we kind of scrambled for there. So it's a work in progress. I feel like, I feel like the only thing that's funny is for some reason, PK and I seem to make everything as difficult as possible without, <laughs> like, we think we have it all like, oh, we've got, I've got four different spreadsheets and this and that. And it's just, I don't know if we're somehow making it harder than right. it is. But I, I feel that pain because I, I um, a very OCD, same way, want to schedule everything out, plan out. But I've actually, it's so much more relaxing if I'll just take each day as it comes. And, yeah. and you've got to have, you know, you've got to have a, balance a, a of both. plan. Yeah. I mean, you know, I need to know, like, we're going on a trip with Dale in Germany, uh, to Germany in June for eight days. I need to know that I've got my bases covered with my children. Mm -hmm. But on a daily basis, it seems like I'm constantly take the kids to school, pick the kids up from school, what appointment here, who's got right. practice for this, who's this. And those kinds of things just seem to be better if I just go the day and, and not get too crazy yeah. over it. And if I don't have supper planned, I don't have supper planned, we go out, whatever yeah. it is. Well, and I think there's, you know, for us too, again, I'm not like, I am very lucky to do a job I love. And with it comes a lot of perks and a lot, some luxuries. So we did, you know, we kind of were like, pulled the trigger and got the motor home, you know, cause we travel with her and yeah. it's so much easier to have a babysitter there if she needs me. And, and it's just really the only way to do it. But it's, I mean, again, it's, if someone saw us, like, I'm not trying to, people who are listening are like, Oh, poor you, you have no. a motor home, but it's, we are this, if we're in parked next to all the drivers, we're the Sanford <laughs> and son of the motor home lot, but it's still very nice. But you know, it's just, but it's funny because we, again, kind of do everything as difficult as possible. My husband drives it. So I'm the, like, so he's leaving early. He's, we're leaving a day a early or we're flying somewhere to go pick up the motor home mm -hmm. to drive it ourselves or do. Um, so I think this year we're going to have to scale some of that back, you know, and kind of just deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> figure out a way to maybe pay a little more money to do it a little easier on us. Cause you know, me with the baby outside crawling under a bay, trying to like hook something up yeah. is not a pretty picture. <laughs> we have a uh, 40 foot fifth wheel mm -hmm. camper yeah. bunk beds. We love to camp. And so we were going to go to Richmond. Our late model team was running the, the Dimly, Denny Hamlin race right. that year. And then we were going to stay over for the nationwide race. And so I'm like, well, let's just make a weekend of it and stay. So I asked our guy here, you know, can you, can you get me a motorhome pass for Richmond? Now, typically I'm thinking because I don't, you know, go in a motorhome uh, every weekend that I'll be somewhere in the back 40 right. and that's fine with me. Yep. The last time I went to Richmond and saw where the motorhomes were and they were all over the place. We pull in and going right down the road, and it's like Jeff Gordon, Dale yep. Jr., Martin Truex, you know, Jimmy Johnson, and our fifth wheel is parked <laughs> in between all these million-dollar newels. And I'm thinking, um, could we park somewhere <laughs> else? This is a little embarrassing, but it was fun, and yeah. everybody thought it was great. You know, they're and like, Richmond, oh, you're right up here in the middle of everything. Yeah, and for fans who don't know, you know, <laughs> Richmond is one of those nice places yeah. where just they everyone literally is together. Yes. And, yeah, but I'm with you. Normally, we're at the we're in the back forty. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize everybody was lot. together. I was like, yeah. ah. This is embarrassing. It's funny too because there's so many stories about like if PK was here, he'd be like, "Oh, tell tell Kelly the time you got me lost and you know down this winding road." And he's yelling at me like, "You realize I just can't back this thing up wherever you want me to, you know?" Because I've got him yeah. on like a dead end road with a 40 foot motorhome, but he's so good at like he literally is just backing it up. Like it's I nothing. hate being the person giving the direction. Uh, me too. Because yeah. I'm never gonna do it as well as it needs same to thing be done. happens in our camper with LW. It's like. Okay, it says to do this, but you go ahead and look at right, it and make sure that's totally. the right way. I don't want the accountability. I turn the phone upside down and then the map turns with it. And I'm like, well, no, can't no, get that perspective. You know? Or if he's backing it up, parking it, you know, and again, so there's places like Michigan. I mean, those stalls, I mean, it's tight and somehow he can do it. But he's got me going back there and saying, okay, tell me how much room I have. <laughs> and again, because I, I use my hands all the time. I'm going like hands front to yeah. back. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm in a, 
I'm in a seat. That's a, where's the perspective? He goes, you have to go side to side. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know? <laughs> yep, me too. Not a good direction giver here. So we talked a lot about this newfound respect for working mothers, and, and you hit on that some, but it takes it takes a lot to do that. It seems like you guys have that figured out and and pretty oh, well mastered <laughs> we do not have it figured out we just you know there i was just not prepared it. for it like mom guilt is such a real oh, thing the fact terrible. that like again every time like here i am you know in mooresville emmy's at home but you know i ha- i've gotten you know i've done meetings with nbc and a charity shoot and i'm talking with you and, and doing all these things here in town but you feel like oh i'm a i'm a bad mom because i'm not with her i'm a bad mom because i i left her mm-hmm. with my mother-in-law and at the end of the day i'm not she is more fulfilled having different people in her lives, but it just, it is keeping up with what society wants you to be is so hard. And I, yeah, my advice or what I'm trying to teach myself is you do the best you can with what you have and you be, you know, you make the rules for your family. What, what works for you? Yeah. That, that is so hard to keep up with. At the end of the day, we should be what we want to be, mm-hmm. not worry about society. Right. But Okay, working moms, oh, they don't have it that hard. Their job's not that hard. Oh, but you need to go out and and be career-minded and set an example for your kids. Like, there's never enough, you know? Like, can you be a working mom or or do you need to be a stay-at-home mom? You know, there's never credit either way. Or you're at the park with, you know, I'm at the park with her, and I'm I'm blessed that on a Wednesday afternoon I get to go to the park with her while other working moms are at their offices. You know, our job is very non-traditional, and it allows me that, that luxury. But I also have to still do a conference call at 3 p.m. or whatever it is. So I'm now, you know, pulling her off the playground so I can talk and pushing her in a stroller on the phone. And if someone saw that, they're like, what are why you can't doing? that mom go play with her right, daughter? Right. It's like, why does she have to be on her yeah, cell phone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's the fact that I'm not in an office allows me to, to be here. But yeah. it's, yeah, it's just finding what works for you. And yeah. I'm, I'm still learning that. In my backpack right now is this book called, I think it's called Let It Go. You know, and it's about like letting go of the pressure and, you know, the guilt of not doing things perfectly. So as did, soon as um, I figure that out, I'll <laughs> I say, did Elsa or Anna write that? No, <laughs> yeah. Go? <laughs> and I still have not seen, would you believe I've not seen the movie? Oh, because gosh. Emmy's not old, like, yeah, old she's enough not to care too, too much yet. Yeah. yeah but yeah. she has a little sweatshirt that has Elsa and Anna on yeah. it. My mom got her. And if she is at the park, like all these little girls are pointing to her sweatshirt. It's so they cute, love it. but she'll be into it soon enough. All those princesses, I know. all those princesses. She is so, she is so into um, do- <laughs> dolls right yeah. now, like carrying a doll. And she says Dolly and she lines them up and, yeah. Um, you know, she has little tea parties with them and it's amazing at, at a year and a half what she can comprehend. Yeah. Same thing with you know. Wyatt at three. I mean, he is uh, into being a fireman right now. Oh yeah. So he, uh, we had a fireman three-year-old birthday party and he got the little fire suit and hat and Renee and Carrie gave him a fireman backpack you fill up with water and a hose that you pump. And we played with that last night from the time he opened it at 530. I, I had to drag him in the house at nine o'clock. He was wetting and putting out he fires was everywhere. the entire neighborhood. This morning at 9 a.m., can I go outside and play with my fireman? And I'm like, yep. So at nine o'clock this morning, he's up, outside yeah. playing with his fireman. <laughs> That's awesome, though. He's got it figured out. The things they pick up on uh, these days is just amazing. To yeah, me. she um she's at a fun age where she'll help me with laundry. You yeah. know, she's all about yep. taking all the clothes <laughs> out of the basket. And but if I'm folding, I kind of throw all the socks out. And I'm like, oh, Emmy, you can do socks. Help mommy with, you know, she's like my little helper. And she will like the other day she handed me two that matched. And I'm and like, you're like oh. how'd you figure that out? Like my daughter's a genius. <laughs> 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 oh gosh. The thing with Wyatt these days is he has a memory like no other. And um he's remembering th- remembering things from 6 and 9 and a year ago. I'm like, "Really? That I is can't believe crazy. that you can remember that." I have a hard time remembering yesterday, but I have a hard time remembering my childhood period. I, really? Yeah, just But what we what I had, you know, divorced parents and here there and everywhere. So I think that had something to do with it, you know, that I was when you, I think when you have the uh, family environment with mom and dad and you're creating those memories, that's a lot more impressionable on their mm-hmm. mind to keep in mind than what we were going through at the and, time. And I also think that like kids just adapt to whatever oh, yeah. they're in, you yeah. know, and, and that's what I think. I'm like, oh my gosh, I leave or, but again, you know, it's people are like, oh, you're very lucky that you can take her with you some. And I'm like, absolutely. And that's why we did it, you know, and it's, as you know, like motorhomes are money pits and oh, yes. it's fuel and it's maintenance and it's, you know, we are not, I mean, we're losing money on it. But she's with me. Yes. And, you know, she might not be with me every single time, but she is with me. And that's, I mean, that You can't put a price tag on that. Yeah. Go ahead. Here's my checkbook. Take it, you know. Definitely. (laughs) All right. The last thing that I got to know about is that your husband, PK, is involved in tractor pulls. Uh, 
this is like a whole another <laughs> episode interview episode on its own. <laughs> he is not only involved, so he tractor pulls. He competes okay. in tractor okay. pulling. Okay. And we grew, I mean, we live in the suburbs or the, you know, like the city, but not, we're definitely not on the farm. And we just have tractors all over our driveway, tractor parts. But he has, so his family had a farm, like the great, like his great grandmother had the farm and all the cousins would go to it on weekends and work. So that's to him, that's childhood. Mm-hmm. And he just, you know, started by buying an antique tractor and kind of fixing it up. And then that became a bigger antique. And next thing you know, he's competing in antique tractor pulls. And now he competes in what's called the farm stock division, which is even bigger. But yeah, he's the guy you go to like the county fairs. I love it. And he's the track, big tractors attached to the weight sled that pulls the pulls down. The- so how many fairs are you going to? Uh, it's pretty- a year? I have a whole nother spreadsheet just for that. <laughs> On if I'm in town, can I go? Because if I go, he puts me to work. Like I'm like the crew member that is like carrying weights or videotape. He'll be like, hey, see if this track's rutted out or what. And I'm like, what? What's like, that mean? Yeah. So I'm like videotaping and then he's yelling at me at my ability. And I'm like, you do. I, I don't know how to do this. They're very so popular. It's he, yeah. And it's an obsession. Yeah. You know, like anything is. Yeah. Um, Any other kind of hobby that turns into that obsession. Yep. Yeah. So he loves it. And he's, he's actually, I think, let me get this right. I think he's the defending, he's the Western Pennsylvania Antique Tractor Pullers Association defending champ of the 12,500 farm stock division. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know how that all fits you got on the trophy. I was say, but, you got it all covered. Yeah. So he's, he's really good and really enjoys it. But it's a lot like racing in that, you know, the more money you put into it, the better you're going to be. Yeah. And I keep, ca- I keep trying to cap him at <laughs> how far he's going to take it. So we, um, we visit Eastern Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I have to get this straight. My Pennsylvania lingo. So Pittsburgh's on the other side, right near Philadelphia. Yep. And uh, in Dushore, which we're between Watkins Glen, Pocono area. Yes. Yeah. Area. So we, I experienced, I haven't been to a fair in forever. And I love that. That's what yeah. one thing I love about the North is that they have all of those. I mean, we still have our county fair, but man, our county fairs are so run down and, and the focus on the the FFA and right. all the showing of the animals and that part of the fair is lost here in the South. I, I, I don't know why, because you would think that it's would still be heavy. Right. Yeah, I never thought of that. But, but in the North, we went to the fair, I believe it was Troy, Pennsylvania. I mean, they had hall after hall of exhibits of all the kids right. in the schools with all the different types of, you know, presentations, whatever they were about farming and animals and cows and growing stuff and all this kind of stuff. So neat. And um, went to the tractor pools and we, we ended up going back. It was either two or three nights that we ended up going back because we loved it so much. I got all these videos on my phone. <laughs> so it is. I it doubt is. I saw him if he's the Western champ. Yeah, but, he's um, the he's the West. So he yeah, does a lot yeah. of like Western PA, Eastern Ohio. Yeah. Um, he keeps trying to talk me into like venturing further out, but it's again, now it's, now I'm tagging along instead of a motor home or, you know, in the, in the pickup with the gooseneck trailer and the tractor on, you know. So his tractor rides inside. Yeah. It I just saw depends. a lot on open trailers. Yeah. It's either, either or it depends yeah. what group he goes. Like sometimes he'll tag along with another guy. And if that guy, a lot of those guys are farmers that have big semis and, you know, so it just depends. He yeah. can do, it can go kind of. Either kind of way. Both, yeah. How many tractors does he own? Well, that's funny because if he's bullet? sitting here and you ask him what he does is he looks at me and he waits till I turn away or I'm supposed to like cover my ears and then he'll say the real number, which is probably higher than I know. <laughs> and he, ca- I count the ones if he has one that is like kind of tore apart and he's using it for pieces and parts and I count that he won't. He's like, yeah. no, it's not put together. I'm like, it is sitting in our driveway blocking something else it's it counts but do you have a fun hobby like that well that's what's funny is I want one like there's nothing that I like he's so passionate about it and I love that he is like I wish I had something I was that passionate about other than my job you know I feel like I guess my job is sort of my hobby because I love it so much Uh, but I don't like I always that's what he jokes he's like well you know he encourages it like he's like you need to find something that um, I'm like, well, I need to find something as expensive as tractor pulling. <laughs> <laughs> or less expensive yeah, so that he doesn't get on you the same way you get on him, it's just, right? <laughs> it's just, but he loves it so much. And if he's not at the farm or tractor pulling, he's on a tractor pulling website. And, you know, it's funny. He's, um, and he talked, you know, there's a lot of guys in the garage, you know, it's, it's they'll give him a hard time. You know, Viggy, Jimmy Johnson's yeah. motor coach driver gives him a hard time. I'll, he'll be like, oh, what's he, what's he getting now? And I'm like, oh, Vig, you don't want to know. It's just out of control. So he got a nice paint job painted up on his tractor. He does. Yeah. And He's not as into that as he is the per- he'd rather spend the money on, on the, performance. the performance. Yeah. Um, but obviously if you're at a fair, you know, people like to see yeah. that. So he, he gets that yeah. part of it and he's, yeah, he's, it's funny. He's actually, 
wanting to move up to the next division, which requires like sponsorship and different things. It's kind of that. So he's out. I don't know how that works. That's what's funny is I've never been on that side <laughs> yeah. of it. I didn't know he's it was like, that in depth. Yeah. He's like, can you help me type up a proposal for So he is, if anyone's listening, he's seeking sponsorship for his, I don't even know what that entails, <laughs> but we'll um, get more details. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's funny. It's, it's, it's a, it's a world like racing. You know, yeah. the people who are in it are into it and, uh, but we are funny because it is a lot of older farmers mm-hmm. and those are kind of his people and we'll, we'll show up at something and they'll joke and say, Oh, what'd you guys do last night? And we'll say, Oh, we, you know, went downtown, had sushi. And they're like, you had sushi or you went downtown. <laughs> like, it's just, again, they're, you know, You're probably the younger subset. We are there. the, or the yeah. younger, yeah. more urban yeah. kind of people at the tractor pool. <laughs> yeah. But they get excited when he shows up because I think that they know that he kind of infuses life into their tractor club. Yeah. That's you know. awesome. You, I will go ahead and guarantee that you'll find your hobby somewhere with Emmy and something yes. that she's going to want to do. So I hope so. We'll, I hope, uh, yeah. We're into the, uh, you know, we, we've done everything. Competition cheerlead, dance, been a dance mom, a cheer mom, an acting mom. Obviously, Carson's done the yep. racing stuff um, from the pit reporting. So you kind of just, yeah. And I look forward to that. Yeah. I, and I don't want to, I mean, I hopefully I'm not that pageant mom that lives vicariously <laughs> through her like, go, go, do it. But um, no, I look forward to seeing just that support yeah. and seeing them, seeing them do it. But Get excited the about supporting something. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm waiting for. That's going to be my hobby. That'll be it. Yeah. yeah. You spend your time and talent and maybe some money there. In the meantime, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a crew member for his tractor pulling <laughs> team. <laughs> That's great. Too funny. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Um, I really appreciate you joining me out of your schedule today and being away from Emmy and and coming over here and doing this. No, um, I enjoy listening. You do a great job. I mean, it's just so many stories in the NASCAR community. And I think, and it's fun when, um, I think for fans to like right now, I probably, hopefully I said something that some fan, Oh, me too. Or I can relate to that. And especially for the working moms or just any mom out there who is, you know, doing the the day-to-day struggle and you do the best you can. It's nice to know we're kind of all in it together. Yeah. I think the show gives them the opportunity to, to see that we're relatable and it's, you know, this is not the type of stories that are going to get the front page news like you talked about or that, that airtime, but still lots of good stuff and stories that people want to hear and and can go, yep, that's me. Yep. I feel your pain there. Yep. I went through that. (laughs) Oh my, yeah. My contents of that diaper bag spilled all over the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. This is Tiff Daniels with a look at what's coming up the rest of the week on Dirty Mo Radio. Thursday, Regan Smith and Heath White will have a special guest on Junior Motorsports Upfront presented by Dale's Pale Ale, their boss, Dale Jr. And you can always listen in to all of Junior's at-track press conferences by tuning in to Said Junior presented by Nationwide. Dirty Mo Radio podcasts are available free of charge 24-7 on DaleJr.com, iTunes, and all major podcasting outlets. All right, it's time now for our tip of the week brought to you by Wella Professionals. Ever wonder how to get that beach hair look? Well, the Wella Professional stylists have given us some simple tips to achieve that style. I'm so excited about this with summer coming up. Um, yeah. I've, I've heard of the product, but I haven't used it, so I'm going to check this out. Tools that you're going to need are sectioning clips, a round brush, a flat brush, and a blow dryer. While your hair is wet, prep your hair with Wella Professional Velvet Amplifier Style Primer. Start blow drying so that the hair feels damp rather than wet and using your flat brush. Then apply the Wella Professionals Ocean Spritz with your hands. Scrunch your hair to add body and texture. Finish with a dime sized portion of Texture Touch Reworkable Clay and define the ends to give a matte finish. Helps recreate that ocean sun-kissed look. If you would like to purchase the Wella products in today's tip, you can visit any of the 782 Ulta stores nationwide and purchase online at Ulta.com. Thanks again. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Fast Lane Family. Fast Lane Family has been brought to you by Wella Professional Hair Care, multi-sensorial hair care products that you will see, touch, and sense the difference from your very first wash. Hair care needs from fine to normal to color to coarse, Wella's got you covered. Wella Professional Hair Care products are available at over 780 Ulta stores nationwide. Visit Ulta.com to find the store nearest you. Thanks for listening to Dirty Mo' Radio. 